Hello viewers, today we shall discuss the rules that were developed by Rinkoff and Geyser after examining the records of 1000 consecutive cases of regmatogenous retinal detachment. Why were these rules developed? Since the most important part of treating a regmatogenous retinal detachment is closing the hole, finding it is the first order of business. What knowledge is required prior to understanding the rules? Before we understand the rules for finding the retinal hole, laid out in this seminal paper which has guided clinical practice for decades, we need to know these. 1. The shape and position of the detachment are governed by the location of the primary break, gravity, anatomical limits such as disc and aura and any chorioretinal lesions. Two, the primary hole is the most superior hole when multiple holes are present because even in the absence of the other holes, the detachment would appear just the same. 3. The disc should be regarded as the anatomical center of the eye and a vertical line arising from it as the 12 o'clock meridian. How should one prepare for finding the holes? First. Determine the limits of the detachment. If they are above the level of the optic disc, they are superior detachments and if they are at or below the level of the optic disc, they are inferior detachments. Next, determine the side of higher detachment. Here it is temporal. And finally, note whether the detachment crosses the 12 o'clock meridian. Now, let's start looking for the hole. So, where do we start? Here is a pictorial representation of the four rules which apply in 93 to 98% of cases. Briefly, the rules are as follows. In superior nasal or superior temporal detachments, the hole lies within one and a half clock hours of the highest border. In total detachment or superior detachments that cross the midline, the primary hole is at or near 12 o'clock. In inferior detachments, the higher side indicates to which side of the disc an inferior hole lies. When an inferior detachment is bullous, the primary hole lies above the horizontal meridian. Now let's understand these in a little more detail. In superior nasal or superior temporal detachments, the hole lies within one and a half clock hours of the highest border 98% of the time. So here, because the higher limit of detachment is on the temporal side, the hole should be looked for within one and a half clock hours of the highest limit of the detachment. Two additional points to note in such a detachment. Fluid never crosses the midline. and the fluid may rise on the opposite side to the level of the primary hole, but never as high as the fluid level on the primary side. In total detachment or superior detachments that cross the midline, the primary hole is at 12 o'clock or in a triangle, the apex of which is at the aura serrata and the sides of which intersect the equator one hour to either side of 12 o'clock. This occurs 93% of the time. Detachment that cross the 12 o'clock meridian invariably become total. If observed before they become total, the lower edge of the detachment indicates the side of the 12 o'clock meridian of the hole. Another important point when dealing with an apparent total detachment is to look for a small wedge of attached retina in the periphery. It may be hidden in the periphery or between two bullae. When present, one can limit one's search to one and a half clock hours on the side of the highest border instead of searching the one and a half clock hours on either side of 12. In inferior detachments, the higher side indicates to which side of the disc an inferior hole lies 95% of the time. When the levels are equal, the hole is at 6 o'clock. Generally, detachments from inferior holes do not become total unless unusual attraction is present. As a rule, inferior detachments that arise from inferior holes are shallow, 
are slow to develop and do not have pigment demarcation lines. If there is a rapidly developing inferior bullous detachment, then the hole is superior. This occurs because the superior hole connects with the detachment by a shallow peripheral sinus. This can be confirmed by examining the sides of the detachment with the head in a dependent position. When the head is rotated towards the side of the hole, more fluid flows into it and, and the pathway is revealed. So that's it for today. If you like what you saw, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from AP's Ophthalmology Pulse. You may watch my other videos by clicking on the thumbnails. Please leave a note in the comment section if you wish for any particular topic to be covered in future. Look forward to regular updates. Thank you for watching.